you for joining us. It's Absolutely. been a long time since we've seen you. Yeah, it's good to be here. You know, um, I guess let's just get right to it. Okay. Why should voters reelect you? Well, I think during the last four years, it's been difficult. It's been hard. Some of the hardest things in our life, uh, whether it was the COVID pandemic, uh, the homeless crisis, the challenges we face, but our county has stepped up and I, and I think we've shown leadership. Uh, when it comes to COVID, we've had one of the most effective responses in the nation. It was incredibly hard, but we sit here today as a county with one of the highest vaccination rates in the nation and one of the lowest death rates. Our economy having an unemployment, um, unemployment rate below the national average, below the California average. And so we got through a difficult situation by coming together. On homelessness, we, you know, our county is doing things it's never done before. In the history of our county, making historic investments, mobile crisis response teams 24 7 countywide to meet people in state of need, and really partnering and pushing cities to invest more in homelessness with the county being there to provide mental health and drug treatment services. So we have a lot of work left to do, but I think our county is headed in a good direction, and I want to continue that work. Well, you mentioned them both. You mentioned the COVID 19 pandemic, you right. also mentioned homelessness, two things. Mm -hmm. um, you were the face of COVID-19. Right. Um, first of all, this is going to be a two-part question. So, yeah. and also with homelessness, right. um, the county's done a lot, but what more can we do as far as homelessness is concerned? Right. But also as far as the pandemic, would you have done anything different? Well, in hindsight, there's, you always learn things that you, you would do different. You would have done this sooner. You would have done this later. Uh, but in the moment, we committed to go out every single day and be very transparent. Tell people every single day what we were doing, why we were doing. It was guided by science. It was guided by the best of intentions. And, you know, when it comes to COVID, there is a real choice uh, in this election. You know, in a lot of campaigns, it seems like maybe there's no difference. That's not the case in my race. Uh, we fought to save lives and keep people safe uh, and protect one another. Uh, my opponent is not only unvaccinated, but cast doubt on if the COVID pandemic even happened undermines all of our efforts around vaccines uh, and has really spread a lot of the mistruths and divisive disinformation that is tearing our society apart today. And so, you know, there is a real choice. When it comes to homelessness, there's always more we need to do. You know, our county has done more than ever, uh, but it takes your city stepping up. It takes your county stepping up. And I think the investment we're making in mental health services, you know, I don't believe there's any difference in someone who suffers from depression and someone who suffers from high blood pressure. But we've never funded, staffed, or cited a system to really meet people's mental health needs. Uh, and our county is doing things that no county in California is doing. Uh, and I think we're moving in the right direction, and we certainly need to continue those efforts. Let's face it, rent skyrocketing, yep. um, home prices skyrocketing, mortgage rates are extremely high. Yeah. People are not being able to buy a home or even rent a home it's in some places. Yep. Uh, and we've seen the average price of rent here in this county. What can you do more, I yeah. guess, to help people in, in terms of affordable housing and maybe even yeah. creating more? There really isn't. Well, we came in to really drive, drive a few things when I got on the Board of Supervisors. One is, I said, we need to be building more housing in the unincorporated area. Those are the areas where we actually build housing than we were before. And I'm pleased to report that today we're building more housing year over year than we were before I arrived at the Board of Supervisors. But the second thing, as I said, let's take a look at, at county owned land that might be in another area and how do we site affordable housing? And we have more than a thousand units of affordable housing underway and under construction on county owned land uh, across San Diego. And as chair of MTS, we have almost 2000 units of housing that is being built on MTS owned land. This is land adjacent to trolley stops exactly where we ought to put it. Uh, so it doesn't get built overnight. But again, the question is, are we going in the right direction? Uh, are we moving in an area of progress? And our county government, again, is active and engaged in meeting the needs of San Diegans. Uh, in a way, you know, you go back four years, folks didn't even know we had a board of supervisors. And now you see our county leading on wildfire prevention, on mental health, on substance abuse, tackling the opioid crisis, building affordable housing, and a whole lot more. Uh, another issue that is facing our county, and we've been hearing it a lot, is inmate county deaths, That's you know, right. and in custody deaths. So yeah. We have a new sheriff that will be elected mm -hmm. um, during this midterm election. Uh, what can, more can the county do to help, yeah. you know, alleviate that issue that they're dealing with? Yeah, I had a real fight with our previous sheriff uh, in terms of the direction we go. I wanted us to really invest uh, in the mental health services. I wanted us to invest in addiction services. I wanted to really invest for those inmates who come in because every one of them who come to county jail, they're all going to get released. And I think we want to release them in a better position, a better place than when they came in, which can also go a long way towards making our community safer. You know, a lot of these are property crimes, people facing addiction. They're going to do their time for whatever crime they committed. But while they're there, let's try and get them some addiction services. Let's try and get them some help. 
And I had a huge fight with the previous sheriff. Uh, he ended up resigning. Uh, the new leadership, led by Kelly Martinez, stepped in and said, hey, we get it. We're adding social workers into our correctional facility. We're investing more in the healthcare settings, more in those areas. And we've seen a precipitous decline in the number of suicides in our jails. Uh, we're now facing a fentanyl crisis uh, and an overdose crisis. And so our board has stepped up to address staffing issues, to provide more technology and more scanners and more resources uh, to try and meet the need. And I'm hopeful Kelly Martinez is our next sheriff. Uh, and I think she'll continue the work we're doing to try and get better outcomes for those that are in our custody. Well, just because in many situations, a lot of times it's just because people just left them there and didn't intervene yep. during, and maybe because they didn't realize that there some was... Some of it was training. Uh, some of it was staffing. Some of it was a culture uh, that needed to change. Um, you know, some of it, it was a lot of things that, that went into it, but it was a completely unacceptable situation, and our board had made clear. There's no investment we won't make. Uh, we've instituted the reforms. The state did an audit. We supported every single one of those findings uh, and have really pushed the sheriff's department to say, hey, we want a different approach. Uh, we want to see us invest. Because at the end of the day, look, these folks may have committed a crime, uh, but they, they deserve humane treatment. Uh, and if we believe in lowering recidivism, then we want you to leave better than when you came in. Uh, and that's the investments that we've been making. And very quickly before we go, on a personal note, we know that you and Lorena Gonzalez, yeah. uh, Fletcher also had a fire in your home, a suspected yeah. arson. Where's that investigation at this point in time and where are you guys at? Yeah, it remains an ongoing criminal investigation. Uh, we don't, you know, the law enforcement have determined it was intentionally set uh, and it was arson. They obviously have not yet caught the individual who did it. Uh, so we can't ascribe uh, a particular motive uh, to the person who was there. But look, we got to find a way as a society, you know, this issue, but just the threats in general uh, that have been coming in, the hostility that's been coming in. It's all right to disagree. It, 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 it's not only okay, it's helpful. I don't want a world where we all agree. Maria, I don't. But we got to find a way where we can disagree and disagree respectfully and disagree passionately. You know, I got buddies I served in the Marine Corps with uh, that are, are very conservative folks, and they'll tell you, I love you like a brother. I don't know that I'd ever vote for you. And I said, it's okay, here, have another one of my beers. We've got to figure out how we can get back to that point of disagreeing passionately, uh, but not seeing the increase in threats and the tone and the tenor and the rise in violence that's happening across our country. And so I hope whoever set our house on fire is caught. Uh, when they are, I know they'll face the, the full impact of the law. Uh, but at the end of the day, as a country, we've got to, again, figure out a way we can disagree uh, without having to get to the levels we've seen in the last few years. All right, Chairman Fletcher, we appreciate you coming in and talking to us here at Fox 5. Thank you well, for having me. All right. Make course. sure you get out and vote, no matter who you vote for. Make sure you get out and vote. That's right.